Thanks, Deb. Super cool. Um, so I'm going to continue a little bit of our talk about our Wisconsin project. And in this deck, I'm kind of trying to do two things. <clears throat> One is I'm building a little bit on the conversation that came up, uh, some of the questions that came up at the end of our morning session about the challenge of understanding the crisis of democracy or, or moment of populism in terms of a um, multi-dimensional object that includes both communication issues, economic issues, as we'll see geographic issues. Um, so I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about the challenge of doing that and really try, try, to, try to spur your minds and suggestions about how we might do that better. Uh, and then my other purpose is to, to use those questions and prompts as an opportunity to talk a little more about Wisconsin specifically and what we're doing here. And I'll get to a little bit of the data that we're using to try to understand language, um, a little bit as Deb is doing, although my, my visualizations of networks don't sh shimmer and move and turn. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so uh, we're trying to think about studying democratic crisis in context, and we're finding this is a very challenging problem because we're quite good, we like to think at least, about taking one of these slices, doing an economic analysis, doing an econ analysis of communication in terms of news media, but putting together multiple layers, uh, which we need to do to address this, this major question, is very difficult. So we're trying to think of context in terms of local history, Wisconsin specifically, geography, cultural milieu, certainly economic trends, as we've seen, macro level political polarization, issues of social trust and faith. We've seen many of these issues before. And also transformations in the communication ecology. For this talk, I'm gonna focus on a specific aspects of the context in which citizens actually work and live. And these we think of in terms of places, different ways of thinking about place, geographic place, social structural place, or the economic place of your place in an in a economy or, or society. And then also your place in communication networks. So I'm going to work through the way that each of these impact our thinking about the crisis of democracy in our particular polity um, with an aim toward thinking about how do we put, put all these things together a little more effectively. So let me start by, by thinking a little bit about Wisconsin's economic geography, which is the particular set of facts on the ground that, that we're dealing with. So um, a little bit of, for our guests. Um, Wisconsin is uh, actually a top manufacturing state. There's a lot of industry in Wisconsin. It actually, in terms of per capita, Wisconsin is the number one manufacturing state um, in the country in terms of jobs per 10,000 10, population. Geographically, not surprisingly, a lot of that industry is focused in the southeast part of the state, around uh, Milwaukee and the surrounding, the surrounding counties, also around uh, the Fox Valley of Appleton and Green Bay, there's a lot of, of uh, that, that kind of manufacturing, but really scattered throughout the whole state, there are factories that have produced cars, uh, machine parts, machining, uh, and paper um, throughout the state. Clearly, in the context of post-industrial changes, that's, that's a part of the state that's been hard hit. Agriculture, we're best known for, uh, for, for milk, other things. Extractive industries, uh, farming, uh, sorry, uh, forestry and mining, especially in the northwestern part of the state. So economically, of course, like many uh, geographic areas, this one is somewhat diverse according to, to what sorts of economic bases different parts of the, the state enjoy. Uh, then we have growing sectors of uh, industries like biotech, information technology, health technology, especially centered around Madison. Uh, and, and, and somewhat Milwaukee as well, as well as financial services. So contrasting health and trends across these different forms of, of economic uh, uh, viability, which uh, Devon mentioned a little bit earlier as well. I'm actually going to not talk about political history at the moment, although we can come back to uh, some of the specifics of that. But corresponding to some of those economic changes, in line with what Devon said earlier, we've seen a, a change in political Wisconsin. Whereas there used to be regular exchange in control of the legislature and governors for most of the latter half of the 20th century, um, it's, uh, uh, and, and in fact reliably democratic in federal elections, it's gotten continually more um, uh, Republican. So you can see the trend in, in four recent presidential elections from 1996 to uh, 2016, you'll see really the overtaking of rural areas, as in much of the country, um, by the red. But there is a specific political geography here. You'll notice especially 
um, the southwestern part of the state along the Mississippi River Valley, the, the Driftless region, which for a long time uh, stayed blue and was actually the, the part of the state that swung most heavily in the last election um, towards Donald Trump. Those are typically purple counties. They're a mix of, of Republicans and Democrats, or, or have been um, until recently. But um, uh, those, those agricultural areas have, have shifted significantly lately. Um, a little more conceptually, uh, place plays this important role, as, as Kathy most of all has shown, uh, in terms of shaping perceptions, values, um, and identities. And Kathy's used this term of rural consciousness um, uh, less to describe the specific consciousness of people in a, in a rural places exclusively than to describe a mindset um, and an identity in those places. Correspondingly, there's this increasing po political polarization, which we just saw, as well as cultural differentiation between places based on um, where they live. So this here we're seeing an intersection of two of those dimensions already. So place in terms of geographics, but also social, socially structurally. Within Wisconsin, we see this reflected in terms of increasing uh, uh, sense or perception, uh, especially among those who subscribe to a more rural identity, uh, of cultural disdain being looked down upon by urban elites, which include in this state, especially those who work for the state government, the Department of Natural Resources, which is one of the main agencies of the state government that has outreach into, uh, um, uh, into rural areas because of its mandate, and then also the university. And a perception that uh, these types of uh, groups are, are meddling in rural areas, don't understand them, don't care to understand them, and also happen to enjoy lavish benefits, working benefits, uh, at the, the taxpayer's expense. Correspondingly, and this actually draws uh, a bit on some of the ideas that Sven Engesser presented at ICA last year, we also have, it, not only do we have this, this other, this elite other, but there's a, a, a sense uh, with a racial uh, dimension to it uh, among, again, the, the, the rural consciousness, that uh, Milwaukee, which is really the home of, of, of diversity in, in this state, uh, is drawing a disproportionate share, an unfair share of state resources. Um, and, and that the, the elites in Madison especially are enabling the flow of tax dollars from the whole state and, and channeling it to Milwaukee. Again, these are perceptions. They don't necessarily hold up um, in, in data, as, as again, Kathy's book um, shows. So there's this really resentment of perceived elitism, which has both a stru social structural dimension and a strong geographic dimension. Finally, I've talked a little bit about the, the, the um, communication networks and people's situatedness in those. So the Wisconsin media ecology has also been changing in ways that uh, we've been tracing and, and Luke has been taking some of the lead on that. So as around the rest of the country, we've had a decline in the, uh, statewide newspapers, in particular the state flagships. Newspapers that tie together the state in terms of sharing common opinions um, and, and editorials around the state. This has uh, a dimension in political economy in terms of Gannett making wide purchases around the state, including of the Journal Sentinel, um, and also uh, increasing void in state reporting. So the number of state house reporters in the legislature has been <coughs> declining, hollowing out uh, the, 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 the content of that news. Uh, it was interesting that York mentioned earlier the importance of television news in Austria. In fact, it's still the, the number one source of news in Wisconsin, as well as uh, much of the, the states. So local TV news, especially the half hour daily of, of television news, remains the primary source of news for, uh, for many Wisconsinites. Although you have, you have to keep in mind the close relationship between the production of newspapers and what local television news draws on, so that as newspapers are narrowing their focus, using more AP stories, talking more about national issues, that's happening at the local level as well. Following on Deb's talk, uh, as we saw the, uh, um, the decline in newspapers, especially in the 2000s, we saw a corresponding rise um, in, um, uh, the, in talk radio. And this happened especially in uh, the Milwaukee uh, ring, the, the suburbs around Milwaukee, as well as outstate Wisconsin. So you really have the, the talk radio waxing just as the newspaper type of media ecology is waning. 
Most of all, Charlie Sykes was influential here. Of course, in Wisconsin, we get the, the national talk radio figures like Rush Limbaugh, uh, uh, um, uh, Mark Levine, uh, or Levin, rather. But in Wisconsin, we also have Charlie Sykes and a couple of other very prominent local state-based um, reporters. Finally, uh, social media, of course, in the last 10 years has come online as an important information and organizing um, platform that is organized both on the left and the right. And in fact, I'll show you next um, a, 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 a snapshot, a, a slice really, of the Wisconsin media ecology that is built out of um, social media, out of Twitter data, but of course reflects relationships from among the media ecology since you have talk radio hosts and others um, involved in the, the media ecology. So what you have here is, is, a, is a network of discussion, specifically a retweet network during the 2012 uh, recall election. So leading up to the recall of Scott Walker in 2012. In the green, you have a very definite cluster of liberal actors who are communicating with one another. In the magenta at the bottom, you have conservative um, figures. And then in the yellow, you have um, not really either, it's sort of civic figures. I think the Green Bay Packers are over there. A number of newspapers that didn't take necessarily strong <coughs> editorial stands. Those are folks who are trying to avoid talking about the political issues and talking about sports um, and other kinds of things. But there's a couple of features of this that are pretty interesting. Um, and I'll just mention a couple of them to you. The, the cluster in the green, the liberal cluster is, as you can see, quite centralized, um, uh, at least in terms of forming a, a fairly neat circle. And the dominant party, the dominant actors there are a, a handful of activists. So activists relatively unaffiliated with the party, certainly with, with the Democratic Party, who became prominent in the uh, protests in the Wisconsin State Capitol in 2011 that Devon talked to, talked about, and then also, um, sorry, um, also continued to be influential during the, the recall election, as well as a number of national level figures. So you also have people like John Nichols who writes for the nation as well as having some, some more local presence here. On the other hand, down in the, the magenta, especially the core of the magenta at the top, and I'll just zoom in there quickly, um, so we're now we're talking about the orange, um, what we actually find is a couple of the key organizing figures here, Vicki McKenna and Charlie Sykes on the right, are both local and talk radio actors. So you have in the social media network the clear presence and influence of a sort of separate conservative media backbone that is able to form the, the core of discussion around uh, Act 10 and the recall during, um, uh, uh, during, during the recall election. So I'm going to talk a little more tomorrow about the communication ecology and, and some of the details of that. But first, I just want to get a little bit, uh, show you a little bit more about um, uh, what we're thinking about in terms of the media ecology. We're trying to be careful to recognize that citizens' experience of news and communication, of course, extends beyond their mediated experiences and often is part of their, uh, their interpersonal experience. And part of what we're seeing during this, this crisis moment, and especially the crisis moment that followed um, uh, Act 10 and then led up to the recall, were actual fraying of civic bonds, as we've described it, in terms of interpersonal talk with one another. Um, interpersonal talk is often seen as uh, a, a mitigator of a lot of sort of the political bufferings of, of, uh, of society. But what we actually found was that political talk was not up to the task of um, overcoming the kind of polarization and contention that we were seeing in 2011 and 2012. So we were interested in understanding what were kind of the dynamics of this. What was preventing people from talking about politics um, and preventing that, that talk from having a sort of ameliatory um, effect. So we noticed a couple of things. One was there was widespread ending of political talk, 33% uh, over a six month period. So that's really widespread decay of, of civic interaction in the interpersonal space. And then also following on what, uh, what Devon mentioned, we noticed that people who are sort of at positions of precariousness, uh, people who experienced the re recession as hitting them very hard, people who found themselves out of place in their workplaces, either because they were a conservative, I'll show you this quickly, either because they were a conservative in a, um, uh, 
in a union government household or because they were a liberal, liberal in a non-union household were being excluded from those spaces. spaces. In other words, spaces in which they normally would have encountered difference uh, uh, and diversity in the sense that Diana Mutz has talked about. Um, they were, apparently, but they were doing so to the extent that talk was being cut off and those channels of diversity were, uh, were in fact decaying. So we're really interested in learning more about this and especially how talk fits into the broader uh, communication ecology. What is leading people to be unable to have conversations that previously would have had really strong uh, uh, civic benefits to them? And then finally, um, uh, I want to talk just briefly about our work at looking at linguistic patterns across some of these discourse spaces. And this draws, uh, or doesn't draw, but is, is very closely related to what um, Deb just talked about. In terms of our gathering of discourse and the ideas emerging from different parts of our communication system, uh, we're especially looking at four or five different things. Kathy's field work, which we've heard a little bit about already, um, political news coverage from local and state newspapers. We've got about 36 papers. We can draw their coverage together, look again a, a little bit at how they're covering issues in different parts of the state to try to inform what are the channels of information that citizens are, are encountering strategic communications by political campaigns, and then also um, social media discourse. So let me give you just the, the briefest snapshot of, of some of what we're doing. Um, this is automated coding of some of Kathy's data. So we're using a, a, a tool here called Lexamancer, and we're just in the early stages of kind of peeling back the layers of how to make sense of uh, the utterances um, uh, in Kathy's data to try to, s try to systematize our understanding of the frames and ideas that they are using uh, in relation to key topics, such as health, uh, immigration, jobs in the economy, um, and these other topics. So this is really just a, a, a brief look at the way that people are, are thinking about, talk, talking about um, uh, healthcare. So you can see healthcare down here. There's a lot of concern about um, paying for healthcare. Healthcare, in fact, when, when we did some, some basic analyses, was the top concern among the folks that Kathy talked to. They're just relentlessly talking about the challenges of paying for healthcare, worrying about healthcare, how they'll cover healthcare if they lose your, their job, um, and so forth. Just give you a little more. Um, and then uh, finally, this is uh, a, a really cool map that Aman uh, Bishek and, and Devon created. Um, and what they've done here is actually looked at the geocoded tweets that we have in our Twitter archive. So this is uh, all of the geocoded tweets out of about 1% of all of Twitter over a about 10 year, uh, five year period. Um, and what they've done is analyzed all the tweets that they have that are geocoded, and then analyzed what hashtags they use. And in this case, what we're looking at are hashtags that are related to jobs in relation to all the other hashtags that were used in any tweets. So the size of these circles essentially represents the percentage of all hashtags used in a given area that were about jobs. And what you see is a clear pattern. Down here in Madison and Milwaukee, those are tiny dots, suggesting that people are talking about a lot of stuff besides jobs. Jobs are not the dominant topics that people are talking about on Twitter uh, um, um, in, in what they're uh, just describing. Um, elsewhere in the state, though, you have some heavy emphasis on jobs. And these are hashtags like jobs, where can I find a job, job openings, um, stuff like this. So it's a map that just I illustrates, essentially, outstate um, economic struggle. A map that uh, mostly uh, follows that is positive and negative talk. So just using a, a dictionary of words that reflect more positive sentence, sentiments, more negative sentiments. So the red are more ne negative sentiments. And once again, you can see those are, are well represented in the, in the outstate area. And then as a contrast, this is talk about sports, talk about the Packers, talk about the Brewers, um, talk about the Bucks. You can see that it's actually more heavily weighted toward the, the eastern part of the state. But basically, it's geographically distributed, suggesting that there might be some validity to the contrast between southeastern and urban versus outstate when we look at those uh, discussions about jobs. Um, so I'm going to close there. I hope I've just given a little bit of a picture of 
what Wisconsin looks like when we try to uh, find the intercept between these areas of geographic place, social structural place, economic place, um, and also placement in the communication network. Really interested to hear your thoughts um, as we develop these techniques and our concepts for marrying these different uh, levels of analysis. Thank you.